Hello and welcome to the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Deb Gillard, your host on this Friday, October 23rd. We are, of course, your community connection since 1991. And we couldn't do it without our wonderful Owatonna Today Show supporters and sponsors over the many years, and including those that we have on the docket today. They include our premier supporters, the United Way of Steele County, Owatonna Public Utilities, Express Employment Professionals, and the City of Owatonna. Our primary supporters are the Owatonna Foundation, Little Theater of Owatonna, Brookdale Senior Living Solutions, Amy Swain Hearing Centers, and our interlude sponsors. They are TPS Insurance, The Third Hand Video Productions, Steele County Transitional Housing, Steele County Historical Society, also the Owatonna Business Incubator, Clancher and Sun Landscaping and Concrete, Horizon Eye Care, Fairview Animal Medical Center, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Carlson Brandstead and Company CPAs, Glenn Maker and Michael Maker of the Brickmaker Funeral Home and Medford Funeral Home, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Officer, Bramer Bank, and Abraham Consulting Technologies. And if you are interested in becoming a sponsor of, or know of someone who would like to, to keep your community connection up and running and giving you all sorts of great information, please get a hold of Leanne. You can reach her at 390 5751 and she'll be happy to get you supporter information. We have a very good show for you today, lots of information. When we come back from our break, we will be talking with Captain Rethmeyer from the Owatonna Police Department and a little bit later on in the program, a whole group of young ladies about uh, shock and Red Ribbon Week. So let's take this first break and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, I'm Rick Smith, golf course superintendent of the Brooktree Golf Course. Brooktree is an 18-hole championship golf course featuring well-manicured greens, tees, and fairways. We are open to the public. I challenge you to find a better maintained golf course for the money we charge here at Brooktree. Come on out and play Brooktree, a great golf course. The Oatana Foundation's mission is to support community progress, and the Foundation has been doing just that since 1958 in the Oatana community. By issuing over $11 million in grants, the Oatana Foundation has helped organizations fulfill their goals in the areas of community, recreation, the arts, and education. Please consider a tax-deductible donation, a memorial, or possibly including the Foundation in your estate planning so that together we can continue to make a positive, lasting impact in our community. Preserving the past, building the present, funding the future, that is what your Oatana Foundation is all about. Hi, I'm Larry Pierce and I play Charlie Baker. And I'm April May Spring and I play Katherine Sims in LTO's current production of The Foreigner, directed by Kathy Rush and sponsored by United Prairie Bank. Performances of The Foreigner will be held Friday and Saturday, October 16th and 17th at 7.30 p.m. with a matinee on Sunday, October 18th at 2 p.m. And again the following Thursday through Saturday, October 22nd, 23rd and 24th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available at the LTO box office by calling 451-0764 or online at the Little Theater of Oatana.org. Don't, Don't miss, miss LTO's, LTO's production, production of, of the, the Foreigner. Foreigner. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us on this Friday, October 23rd. As I mentioned, we have Captain Eric Rethmeyer with us from the Owatonna Police Department. How are you? Good. Very good. Thanks for having me. Good. You're welcome. We're very always glad to hear from our Owatonna Police Department and have representatives here and hear what's going on and uh, what we can do to be better citizens and protect ourselves and, and really work closely with you. One of the things I, I want to talk about before we even get into it, I see that you're wearing a black band um, over your badge and that's um, in honor of something uh, something that happened this weekend. Yeah, right? real sad. This past weekend, a deputy, a deputy from Aiken County was killed in the line of duty while guarding a prisoner up in St. Cloud. Okay. Um, at St. A hospital up in St. Cloud, um, and it's traditional throughout the law enforcement community that we wear a mourning badge uh, to cover our badge um, following his death until he's laid to rest. So it's okay. an, it's an honor of, of him. And that kind of goes state by state. It does, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you happen to know this gentleman? I did not. No, no, I did not. But it doesn't matter. He's part of our law enforcement absolutely. family. Absolutely. No, absolutely. So that is the reason for the band on the badge. And um, and again, I know. Yeah, all of you feel for officers right. like yourselves that Absolutely. might be in that situation and their families mm -hmm. too. So thank you for sharing that with us. A little bit more locally then, um, we definitely want to talk about um, crime prevention. What can we be doing right now? What kinds of things are, you, are we seeing? 
Um, you know, what's what's going on in Owatonna? Yeah, um, well, what we're seeing right now is, is, is a, a spike in some crime that we're not really used to going on in Owatonna. You know, we're okay. used to our community being a, a, a relatively safe community. It is. Um, but we've had some issues recently that we're trying to address and trying to get to the bottom of, but we've had a number of burglaries, uh, residential burglaries more or less. Okay. Um, and then... Um, um, thefts from vehicles, um, okay. and we we tend to believe that they're all intertwined, um, but somehow um, we've got to come to a, a conclusion and, and, and clear these cases and, and make some arrests. But um, it's concerning for our public right now. Is there any sort of commonality between them? The types of things that are being stolen, even, or is it is it money? Is it property? Is it is it yeah, both? It's mainly property. Is it? Um, yeah. And the the commonality or the common denominator that we see in all these cases, it's usually a vehicle or it's a garage that's left unsecured. Okay. Um, during the overnight hours, um, okay. a side garage door and overhead garage door is left open, and then we see you know weed whippers or, or, or gas cans or stuff like that. Still concerning to us because people are going into somebody's residence and mm -hmm. taking these, these items. Okay. Um, and it's always a public safety threat that we're concerned about that somebody may interrupt this burglary when it's taking place and somebody sure. may get hurt. So. Sure, because you don't know what might be going through the burglar's mind at that moment. Absolutely. They're just trying to get away with something. And, Absolutely. And, um, do you have any sense as to whether it's a person, a group of people, or? Um, yeah, again, uh, we think know. they're probably all intertwined because okay. there's, it's, it's all the same items which are being stolen. So, okay. um, but again, concerning for us, and it's a, case, it's a number of cases that we need to get taken care of. Okay. So let's talk about what we do when something like that. It, what if we fear for something like that happening? What if, I, what if my dogs bark and I don't really know what's going on outside, but I maybe see a shadow by yeah. you know, the car in the driveway? What should I do? Yeah, but I always encourage people to call 911. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't I mean, don't look through the phone book looking for the, the, the main number, call nine one one or we'll send our squad cars out right away to investigate. Yeah. And don't go trying to take care of it yourself. That's right. You know, we, we want right. you who are trained to know what to do to, to come there and, and put our mind at ease. If it's nothing, it's nothing. That's right. If it's and we'd rather going have... through the yard and you know, and that's what my dogs were barking at, I'd rather have you guys tell me that. Right. We'd rather have it be nothing, but uh, we we don't want to take any chances with what it might be. So we always okay. encourage people to call nine one and call nine one one immediately. Yeah. Don't wait 15 or 20 minutes until you think, well, maybe I should report that because by then the chances are um, whoever was in your garage or whoever was in your car is long gone. Yeah. And our chances of finding them just diminish so so quickly yeah. the more time that goes past. And the damage is potentially done. Yeah. Um, is there, aside from locking the doors and that kind of thing, have you seen any that are actually broken windows, broken doors, jimmied, yeah, anything once, like that? Yeah, once in a while in the vehicles you see a window that's broken, but okay. again, um, it's because somebody's left a laptop or a purse or something in plain mm. view, which is really concerning to us too. Um, we, you know, we really encourage people: don't allow yourself to be a victim. Take precautions. Park your vehicle if you can't put it in the garage. Park it underneath a light or someplace where there's light outside. Um, and please take your your items out of vehicle that are in plain sight because it's just an opportunity for somebody who wants your items more than you do to break yeah. into your car and take them. Isn't that interesting? And we have so many of those things now. They're very portable and easily picked mm -hmm. up iPads, phones, computers, and we do, we take them all over. And I think sometimes we forget, mm -hmm. um, you know, because they're just, they're with us all the time. And I think we forget the value of what someone might do sure. to have that who does not have that or is going to try to sell it or, Absolutely. or whatever. So first and foremost, get those valuable items, keep them out of your car. Um, to, to prevent that. In your home, you really can't help having what you have in the garage, but certainly make sure your garage is secure. Yep, absolutely. And again, that's what we're finding for the most part. It's not forced entry we're not finding. Okay. Um, we're finding just a garage door, overhead doors left open, um, our side doors left open. Um, the, the, our victims will come out the next day and find out some of their properties missing. How about security lights? How about those sensor lights that you see? Some people have them, some people don't. Do mm -hmm. they tend to, are they enough to, do you feel to, to have someone say, okay, the light's on me, I'm, get, I'm taking off? Um, we will always recommend security lighting okay. uh, because you don't, the person who breaks in your garage doesn't know that that's a security light. Maybe the resident just turned their light on and they're, they're out of there. True. Um, True. They're not going to stick around. So um, we'll always recommend lighting. Yeah. And at the very least, it does shine a light on them, which is a little less, you know, it's maybe not where they want to be. They'd rather be in the dark and they'd rather be doing this without somebody knowing, Absolutely. you know, what's going on. Any other issues that we're dealing with right now in regards to crime prevention? Um, you know, those are our main issues that we're, we're battling right now. Okay. It's just the ongoing uh, burglaries to garages and, and car break-ins. Okay. So let's try to minimize those by doing what Captain Rethmeyer says we're supposed to do. Um, safeguard our valuables, make sure things are locked up. You know, don't be complacent. I know we were talking a little bit ahead of time, and yeah. you know, people are always wondering, well, where is it happening, and therefore, kind of wanting to assign it to their neighborhood. But That's right. really, we need to be vigilant. And and 
I don't like to think like someone who's committing a crime would be, but honestly, if you're kind of sticking to a certain area, yeah. they're going to be watching out for you. So they probably do bounce around. You really in, do. In an, you know, in an effort to not be pinned down. Yeah, we always think of Owatonna as a small community, but we're really not anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, we're spread and, out. And, and we pattern our crimes too, and I, we do crime mapping, but there's not a set pattern to this. It's all over. So it's okay. just, it's wherever they can find someone that's willing or allowing themselves to be victimized. Yeah. So we all need to be careful. And when in doubt or when there's any suspicion, call 911. Absolutely. And, Suspicious yeah. activity, call 911. Yeah, we're going to get police force there. Um, one other thing we wanted to just touch on a little bit, um, body cameras. We've mm -hmm. heard a lot of talk about body cameras, I think, nationally. Yep. Um, and how does that relate to us here in, in Owatonna and Steele County? Well, Owatonna, I think we'd be naive not to look into it. And we're mm -hmm. researching it right now. Our administrative staff is. Um, and, and it's a real hot topic right now. Um, right now, we are, we're, we're gathering information. Okay. Um, we have not instituted any type of a body cam program yet okay. um, and we don't have anything in the near future which we are going to do. Um, I think it's going to be um, something that's going to be part of law enforcement in Otana sometime in the future. I just don't know when. Okay. Um, so right now we're looking at information and finding out what we think are the best practices um, and our main concern right now is for is for the privacy of our community members. Mm -hmm. um, right now uh, Minnesota has um, uh, their data laws are such that right now if we record a video it becomes public data. Okay. I'm never really concerned about what happens when we go into a medical or we go into uh, a, a mental health crisis situation sure. and we have body sure. cameras rolling. Um, really something that the victims or the people that are, are asking for police services shouldn't have to worry about whether that's going to become public information. Very true. Um, so right now we're waiting for some legislative direction on that mm -hmm. and how that data is going to be classified. Right now it's public. Um, and that's concerning for us. That's concerning yeah. for our community members. Is that pretty much statewide? Are we looking? Have have there been cities that have implemented? I'm not even aware. Yes, there is. Okay, there, um, there are some cities that are currently running body cameras in Minnesota. Okay. Um, recently, the Minnesota Chiefs Association um, petitioned to the Minnesota State Administrator to reclassify um, data on a temporary basis as private, or private relating to medicals and and okay. and mental health crises, um, and that was de denied. Okay. Um, so still, it's all public information, and again, that's very concerning to us. The other the other question that I would have in just listening to it on a national scale, and we're going to run out of time here mm -hmm. too, would be the collection of data and what you do with it. So right now, there's nobody in place. So it's not even the privacy issue. There's no one in place to really manage that data. And if um, all your officers are out there wearing body cams, what happens then? When well, that's... we'd have to have somebody that manages it. Okay. And, and I could look at a grand scale. Um, Seattle, Washington has a program. Okay. They have 35 full-time employees that just manage their body camera program, wow. just the data collection. Yeah. Again, much bigger than we are, yeah. uh, but it's still an issue that needs to be looked at. Well, it does, and you'd be remiss if you were not forward-thinking right. and thought about that as well. And that's what we're too. doing right now. Well, thank you very much. We have used this time very valuably, I think, and um, with a lot of great information, but our time is up, so we're going to say goodbye to you for this month, and um, always a pleasure having our police de department representatives here. Well, thank us you. Know what we can our pleasure. Do better. Our All right. pleasure. Thank you, Eric. Uh, we'll take a break for our supporters, and we'll be right back to talk about shock. Hi, I'm Mike Bath, General Manager of the Napa Distribution Center and 2015 Corporate Campaign Leader for United Way of Steele County. Every dollar donated during this year's United Way campaign is an investment in the future of our county. Our goal this year is to raise $670,000 to create a stronger, healthier community where everyone has the opportunity to meet their basic life needs and reach their full potential. It takes all of us pulling together to meet our common goals. And thank you for doing your part to support United Way of Steele County by giving from the heart to this year's campaign. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. I didn't just want another job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town, and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself, and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. I'm Bill Owens with the Owatonna Business Incubator. Whether your business is just starting out or is expanding, 
we have the office space and manufacturing space that you need. As the Small Business Counseling Center for this region, we are able to help you in your expansion or your startup of your business. We are a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us on the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. It is Friday, October 23rd. Look at my full house here in the studio. <laughs> All these wonderful ladies here, and we're going to be talking about Shock and Red Ribbon Week. So let's get some quick introductions underway. I have sitting next to me Nancy Williams, correct? Yes, and I am the new uh, Shock advisor at the high school. Okay. Shock stands for Students Helping Others Choose, and it's really a program about... Um, living a healthy and drug-free, alcohol, tobacco-free lifestyle. Okay, and next to you we have? Um, I'm Lauren Johnson, and I am a fourth-year shark student and a third-year officer. Okay, and what year in school are you? <coughs> oh, I'm a senior this senior year. Senior in school, okay. Next? I'm Dahlia Adams. I am, I've been in shock for for three years, and I'm. this is my first year as an officer. Okay, and what year in school are you? Uh, junior. Junior. And? Um, I'm Anna Hagen. I am a senior this year. This is my first year as an officer and my third year in shock. Very good. So some definite experience in mm -hmm. shock and what's going on. So let's let's talk a little bit more, if we can, with Nancy. And we're going to have these our girls fill us in on all the things that are happening for Red Ribbon Week. Mm -hmm. But let's, a little bit of background on, on shock itself, more than the little bit that you just gave us. And sure. So, um, Shock has been around for a long time at Oatana High School, and um, let me tell you, these girls do a fantastic job. We are missing one of our officers, Paige y Yanka. Yanka. <laughs> <laughs> um, she couldn't make it this morning, but these guys have been involved in lots of activities. Um, as the officers, you know, they're really our leaders. Mm -hmm. um, we have about 60 kids at the high school that wow. have committed to shock um, and being part of the activities. Some things that they do, I'm just going to highlight a few, yep. is um, they help by chaperoning the teen night at OJHS okay. and the creeker nights at um, Willow Creek as well. Okay. Um, they they do a ton of things around Red Ribbon Week, which the girls will talk about. But in addition to that, we go into all of the fifth grade classrooms in the spring of the year, okay. um, two different visits, yep. to really talk to our fifth grade students about um, how to say no to drugs and alcohol and poor choices, um, to be a, real, a role model for them and to educate them and help with awareness. Um, so that's a big um, activity that they've been involved in and continue to. Um, we do some volunteer projects. We're actually going to be helping um, the healthy seniors to rake some leaves oh, and nice. things like that. We help out around prom time to get the message again about um, being safe and drug and alcohol free so that everyone can have a positive prom experience. So that's just a little bit about shock okay. in general. Now Red Ribbon Week is um, actually the oldest and largest drug prevention campaign in the country. Happens really? all over the place. Wow. Um, yeah, it's been going on, I think, around 50 or 52 years now, okay. quite a long time. A little bit of the story behind it is um, a man by the name of Enrique Cam Camarena, um, and he went by Kiki, was, uh, grew up real poor, wanted to make a difference, um, went into the law enforcement and then eventually into the um, drug enforcement ad administration and um, really worked to um, help, you know, the, um, the officers with um, g getting drugs and alcohol not readily available to our youth. Okay. And ended up dying in um, the line of duty and all that knew him decided they wanted his legacy to go on. Oh, and that's beautiful. how they started this whole Red Ribbon Week um, idea. And the huh. idea behind it is that um, that people make a pledge. Here is um, the, it's actually not a ribbon, but it's a wristband mm -hmm. that we give to all students in the entire district, including St. Mary's. Um, and 
ask them to really think about um, committing themselves to healthy and drug-free, alcohol-free, all of that by wearing their wristband. They'll sign a pledge. And then with that, they'll also have some special discounts throughout the week of Red Ribbon that okay. I think Anna will talk about a little bit later. But Red Ribbon Week is a big piece of what Shock does for the community and um, in our schools. And mm -hmm. these girls are fantastic representatives. You no, know, I've models. heard about it for a long, long time myself and did not know that. What a wonderful legacy yeah. for that for that gentleman who had such a passion for it. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to start out with Dahlia, yeah. correct? Yeah. And um, I'm not sure exactly how you portioned out what you're going to talk about, but overall we're going to find out about everything about yeah. Red Ribbon yep. Week. So, so um, to start out with Red Ribbon Week, we go to the fourth grade classrooms and we try and get them to do posters. Okay. And the poster theme this year was I Have the Power to be Drug Free. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of drew the posters and then the it was every elementary school, uh, fourth grade, and then they sent in the posters to the high school and we graded or judged them I guess. Mm -hmm. And we chose two winners from each classroom. Okay. And so the winners get to have a pizza party on sweet. Next Friday. Next oh Friday. very nice. Okay. Friday. Friday. During Red Ribbon Friday. Week. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, a lot of fun. And so they could take that theme yep. and make the poster based on how what they felt about it. Yep. Very nice. And then to go along with that, we also kind of get the other children who did the posters and we decorate the high school with them through Red Room. Oh, good. Good yep. awareness. Okay. Um, what are we talking about next? That's Anna. Yes. All right. Anna, <laughs> go. You're up. Um, so <laughs> Dahlia kind of mentioned a little bit of like decorating the school. And we also have booths during the lunches. Okay. Um, which us shock officers and shock members will be at during the lunch periods um, through Red Ribbon Week. And we'll kind of like have information about being drug free, you know, have like the wristbands, have a okay. pledge to sign. Um, and so we just kind of do that throughout the week just to get the attention out and make sure everybody knows about it. Okay. Um, and then we also partner with the junior high, as Nancy said. And on Wednesday of Red Ribbon Week, we'll have an ice cream social with them after okay. school. And we kind of partner with the Y Shock students, which are like the younger okay. Shock students, like preparing for Junior Shock. Junior age. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And we'll help out with that on Wednesday. Um, and Nancy also mentioned the wristbands that we have throughout the week. Mm -hmm. And each student will get kind of this little coupon, um, and it'll talk about like where you can go. There's like Old Town Bagel, Subway. Um, and so they can use that throughout the week. Ooh, you just flash your wristband, exactly. and it's kind of glittery. Yeah, it's super. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there, you're going to get the discounts at those particular yep, exactly. businesses. Yep. Very nice. What great participation for our, mm -hmm. from our local businesses, too, in support of this program. Okay, and Lauren, um, you're up. So to start off Red Ribbon Week, we have kickoff down in Central Park. Okay. It's going to be really fun. It's free for everybody to come, and they can participate. We have a lot of... Um, outdoor games like a beanbag toss and have a um, couple games like that and then we have all of the poster winners from the fourth grade get to come up and we acknowledge their posters nice. and they get to see it um, there's going to be the police will be there and they'll have the impaired goggles so you can kind of see what it's like and how bad it is and um, they will the mayor will be there the also. mayor will be there okay. as well to okay. well, talk community participation and this mm -hmm. is monday right monday night at five at okay Central Park. it's coming monday night at five so yep. that is when red ribbon week kicks starts off. kicks yeah. off kicks on off. that monday the 26th exactly. okay yep and um it'll be a lot of fun they're just going to be face painting for kids there's going to be a lot of different booths. You can come and get some of these fantastic <laughs> prizes that we have. Yeah, fun and you can stuff. get, there, there'll be um, wristbands there if you didn't get one for some reason. And um, there'll be free food and drinks to Very nice. And come. the food is actually provided by the Kiwanis Club. They mm -hmm. partner with us for a lot of Red Ribbon Week activities. Okay. The poster contest when we do the pizza party, mm -hmm. they help us with that. And then all of the food for... Um, the kickoff night. Well, so we're again, very, what a nice partnership. And yes. they're involved. They're, yeah. I know they're very involved in the youth, too. Um, just some of the other things that we have on the table here, aside from the fun stuff that they can get that night, too, or is just some literature that it mm -hmm. just generally is going to be available at the booths, right? Yep. yep. And is always available, I'm guessing, Absolutely. through the Shock yes. program. Yep. Yes. Um, we want to let people know how they can find out more about it. If they are hearing this and they say, wow, I'd like to be involved, or maybe my daughter or son would like to be involved, um, we've got some contact information. Um, and that is either the Steel County, oh, 
You know what we didn't mention? Cute shirt. Cute shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dahlia, it's time to model. <laughs> yep, we wanted to let people know that they can um, find out more about what's going on. Oh, and turn to, oh, turn whoops, turn around cool. again. She <laughs> still wasn't there. Yay! So it's got Safe and Drug Free right. Coalition, which they are affiliated okay. with, and the Big Shock <laughs> logo on the back. So you can't miss them, boy, with that one. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll be all around yeah. Central Park. Yeah, you'll wearing see all the Shock yeah. members wearing those. And, um, and again, if you have questions about it, Nancy, that's your office at the high school, correct? Yep. Or the phone number that people correct. can call if they're interested in finding out more or need to know more about this week or shock in general. Same with Safe and Drug Free Coalition, which you guys really work hand in hand mm -hmm. with. So mm -hmm. yes. we hope for a great week for you. Wonderful weather on Monday. Yes. Nice yeah. weather, so you can have a great event outside. We hope so. um, and thanks for all that you do, Anna and Dahlia and Lauren and Nancy and all the other folks on your shock. Um, it's a great, I think, a great calling and yeah. good for you for passing along some real positive information for yeah. Thank our you. youth Thank and your you. peers. Thank Thanks you very much. much. Thanks. Thanks for being with us. Have a great week. Uh, we're going to take a break for our supporters, and we will be right back to wrap it up. Hi, Warren Abraham, Abraham Consulting Technologies, your one-stop technology shop. We support the Otana Today Show. Otana A voice you can talk to We're growing with you With you in mind And everything we do Oh, a ton of public utilities few announcements to finish up our Owatonna Today show on this Friday, October 23rd. A reminder of the Owatonna in support of Alzheimer's Art for Hope. Um, going on tomorrow evening at the Owatonna Art Center from 7 to 10 o'clock. There will be a live auction with some beautiful artwork, guitars, um, and many other things, music, uh, bidding numbers, hors d'oeuvres, and um, all sorts of fun that evening. And you can get your tickets for that still at Kotke Jewelers at the Elks Club or any Owatonna in support of Alzheimer's member. The Owatonna Foundation it has those scholarships available. That deadline is coming up on Sunday. Please visit their website for those non-traditional scholarships. Um, and you can find them at owatonnafoundation.org um, or Jill Holmes at 455-3059. She helps to facilitate that program. So do know if you had those in the works and we're going to submit those, that deadline is coming up very quickly. Riverbend Nature Center has their science and nature themed homeschool programs. The next one coming up is Geology Rocks on next Monday, October 26th. It will be from 2 to 3.30. And there will be students learning about geology of the area, spotting fossils, recreating the geological history of Minnesota, all sorts of really interesting things. Cost of the program is $8 per person. Uh, registration is required by today. So depending on when you're hearing this. Um, and you can go on the Riverbend Nature Center website or call them at 332-7151. And Influenza Vaccination Clinic, the next one coming up is this Monday from 4 to 7 at the New Richland Heartland Ellendale Geneva Schools um, in Ellendale. So um, do take advantage of that if you are interested in the flu shot clinic. Coming up next week, school district bond referendum, uh, Boyd Hubert from CARE 11 will be talking about his land of 10,000 stories, hospital auxiliary, uh, pruning trees, the Trick or Treat Trail head by the Owatonna Park and Recreation. So all sorts of great things we'll be talking about next week on the Owatonna Today Show. Have a great weekend. We will see you then.